guys, this is Kevin with Louisiana Snake ID, LA Snake Boys with a Z on YouTube where you're watching us right now. I want to really do a video for you guys of an animal that a lot of people are unfamiliar with, an animal that is not very common, commonly seen during the day especially, but it's very misidentified uh, often. It's usually given the wrong name and it's something I wanted to cover because we do have them in South Louisiana, we have them all over the place, and usually you'll find them in ditches and stuff when it rains a lot. Um, what we're talking about here guys is what a lot of people will consider an eel but it's not actually an eel. I'm gonna start with the smaller one. I'm gonna show you what this is real quick. It is, these are Amphalumas guys, okay? These are large salamanders and these were found in our ditch in our front yard and it's something that we wanted to get a really cool video of. Um, <laughs> we're gonna kind of go in and out where you can see them swimming around inside the thing. These guys are giant salamanders called Amphalumas and we have three toed and we have two toed salamanders uh amphumas and i'm gonna uh we'll do an underwater shot real quick Alright guys, I'm going to try to hold one for you. These are super slimy. People will say snakes are slimy, and it's not the truth. But these guys are crazy slimy, okay? Um, if they stay out, in the, uh, out of the water, they get to, like a sticky, attack you, uh, and it's, it's easier to hold them once they start to dry off. But when they're wet, they're almost impossible to hold, okay? And um, that's what makes uh, really good for to get away from predators. And that's uh, a natural defense for them. It's like a mucus slime that they have on their bodies uh, but if you look closely they do have legs okay that's why they differ from sirens and mud puppies um, mud puppies will have the front legs sirens won't have any legs Ooh, I'm trying to grab them again um, so sirens uh, mud puppies will have these front legs but they won't have these back legs that's how you can tell the difference legs are laying still <laughs> have to get them with the towel but if you look right here the legs are hold on, let's back it up the towel where I can hold them um, here are the back legs, and this is what you can tell. You can tell right away that it's uh, it's not a siren, it's not a uh, mud puppy. Uh, these guys are uh, a different type of salamander, it's called Amphalumas, and this one right here is a three-toed. Um, come closer, please, so you can get a shot of their toes. Um, this is a small one, so it may be hard to see. But I'm gonna try to get one a little bigger, but you can count the toes on them. Um, let me grab a little larger one so we can see it a little better there. This one's got really good toes. Um, again, it's hard. Once they move like that, it is almost impossible to hold them. So I'm going to have to put them in a towel. Um, it's amazing. Like these, you really have to, to, to try to hold one is uh, something you need to experience really in person. But, um, so this guy's a bigger one, obviously. And they have a really powerful jaw. Haven't been bitten by one, but uh, I used to catch these when I was growing up. And I thought they were eels, and then I learned recently that they're that they're salamanders. But look, look at his toes right there. See, see how three toes on him. Okay, so has a three-toed amphuma. Um, they do, like I said, they have the four legs. Uh, what do these guys eat? These guys. Oh, he must say he. Uh, we'll put this one back. He ate a crawfish, and he's getting sick. He doesn't want to uh, be held, so I'm gonna put him in there. Get a, get a, a different one. Um, you never know what's gonna happen with a wild animal, guys. But. People need to learn what these are because most people think they're eels. I actually had somebody on a page the other day said they were telling, arguing with their neighbor because their neighbor swore it's an eel. Um, but yeah, this uh, correct. This is a salamander. I'm um, gonna set him on the ground real quick. Maybe we can get some shots like that while you're not finicking around too much. But um, this guy, unlike the last one over here, oh, this is a special one. This one is a two-toed amphuma. He actually only has two toes on his on his little feet. And I'm gonna try to get a better shot of it. Here's the side. You see that? That one only has two. That's how you tell. You literally count their toes. Uh, visually, they look very similar. Um, but again, they have the two legs here and have the two, the two legs back here. And these guys will use the, um, the little legs to push them boys through tunnels. Where do they live, okay? So let's do a little lesson right here. These guys live in the ground, all right? So you're not gonna see them most of the time when it's very dry outside. You might see them if you're, uh, you have crawfish traps out and you're trying to catch crawfish in the swamp and you have bait in them. You know, a lot of times they'll get caught in the crawfish traps. Uh, we put one behind the house. This guy was in the crawfish trap. All the rest of them were caught in our ditch out front. But um, when you would find them, 
is whenever it rains and the water fills up so much in the water table, it'll raise the water up out of the ground and it'll come into the ditch. And there's, if you're holding water in your ditch, there's a chance to see these mostly at nighttime, okay? It's possible to see them in the daytime, but your best chance to see them is during the nighttime. And what we do is we walk around with a flashlight and some nets, guys, because uh, they're super cool to see. And uh, we saw some the other day. Um, sometimes we catch them, sometimes we just watch them and just let them go. Uh, but I wanted to do a good video with you guys on this. And these, they, they eat crawfish, they'll eat fish, they'll eat frogs. So they're, they're hunting at night um, and looking for all the, uh, the animals that live in the ditches, okay? These guys will eat the crawfish underground. The ones the crawfish, when they're in the ground, they'll burrow in the thing and try to get them. He's trying to go in the uh, grass right there. If he was wet and there was water right here and there was a hole, he'd be gone, okay? So um, if you really want to have some fun, as a kid, what I would do is my, at my grandma's house, they had, uh, we knew there were some amphumas. Again, we called them eels, but I was wrong in that. Um, that would come out every time it rained. And I figured out where they were going into the ground. We found a hole that was underneath the concrete of their driveway. And every time I would go visit my grandma's house, I would get a piece of string and a hot dog. And depending on uh, if I wanted to get down deeper in there or not, I would put even like a, I'd put like a nut on there, like a nut or a bolt um, with the hot dog. And I would feed it down the hole. And the string would sit there. And then all of a sudden, the string would start pulling back. And that was the Amphuma biting onto it. I let him bite him a little bit. And I would slowly work the string up, work the string up, work the string up, and I'd get it all the way out of the ground, grab it, and we'd hold on to it for a while and, and, uh, and get to hang out with it. And then we'd just let it go, and we'd catch it all the time. I've never been bit by them. I, I do hurt, I have heard that they have powerful jaws. Um, it's not something that I've experienced personally. Uh, look at your little nostrils on the front of his face. Can you see that right there? They're really cool. They have the nostril right there, and then they have these beady little eyes that look like they're just kind of part of the body. They just like you don't even like have a socket. Uh, it looks like it's just kind of like a bump on his face and there's the eye right there um, I would imagine their vision isn't great outside during the day I'm not 100% sure but since they're mostly nocturnal eaters and movers I would imagine that uh, their vision isn't fantastic all the time I'm gonna put this guy back in the water and we get a different one while we keep doing this I don't want to dry him out um, but I do want you guys to see the different colors and um, and just to, and see what they're all about Alright guys, we'll come back over here real quick. We'll keep setting him on the ground. This is a three-toed. He's moving his little legs. Trying to trying to walk away from it. So they do actually serve a purpose. They're not just uh, useless appendages. They actually serve a purpose. On our Facebook page, uh, Louisiana Snake ID, I did a Facebook Live video with these guys. Um, just so people could see them. Um, but I didn't think the quality of the video was going to be as good because Facebook Live is in full HD. That's why we wanted to do a YouTube video with them as well. Um, so make sure you follow us on Facebook. It's very important. We're Louisiana Snake ID. There is another group that sounds very similar to it and the name is very similar, but that's not us that's associated with us at all. We're Louisiana Snake ID. Um, and we've been around since 2017, earlier, uh, like around March or in April in 2017. So we've been around. We were the first one in Louisiana uh, with those names like that. So we wanted to uh, get out there because there wasn't anything like us um, in our state. There's a lot in other states. So that's the purpose of our page is to educate people on snakes and reptiles and why they're beneficial. But um, so in, somebody asked on the video and I was explaining what these guys eat is like I said, crawfish, frogs, and minnows. Mm. Woo -wee. But they are the main prey of one of our the coolest snakes that we have in the United States, especially Louisiana, the western mud snake. And they're actually uh, they're prey of the, uh, the eastern mud snake too. But we have a western mud snake in Louisiana and these guys are part of their main part of their diet. They like to eat these guys a lot. Um, we talked about in that other video that the mud snakes have a sharp tail and it's used for two things. It's used to uh, scare away predators because they'll poke them in the leg. I mean, what, they'll poke the predator with their tail and hopefully they feel like they're being bit and they'll let it go. But also, the tail helps to hold these slimy amphumas so they can eat them. And we've got a video that we'll be posting on the website pretty soon. Uh, we've actually got uh, two of our uh, mud snakes that we're rehabbing have eaten some amphumas and we got it on video, which is super cool. Uh, I just got to edit the video and get them up. But uh, these guys are, like I said, the, some of the world's largest salamanders. Uh, they come in all different uh, sizes. 
Obviously, they get quite big. They get a few feet long, even going backwards. But it's kind of cool to see them go backwards. Like a snake couldn't do that as easily because their scales would catch and it would pull their belly scales. But these guys don't have scales since they're so slimy. And I'm going to wash them off and we'll put them back in the water because it's covered with all this grass he's sticking to. Um, <laughs> they're so sticky, guys. Um, but yeah, I had somebody earlier just say it was an eel. It's not an eel. These are salamanders. Um, but I wanted, like I said, I just want to do one video with you, just for you guys. Um, remember the difference, okay? We have sirens, 